up oh, some leaves. This is gonna be my review of the Thule uh, Sport Travel round trip sport travel case. So this is the very first time that I've flown with it. I did some uh, custom artwork on it just to identify that it's that it's mine. And uh, I wasn't happy with the handles because there wasn't really any handles aside from a handle to pull with. So I added from down at Home Depot. Added these. I added one of these, just a carabiner with a handle on either side. Now, I was concerned about this case before buying it because there were some reviews about the clasp being uh, being relatively cheap, and I was concerned about the plastic itself on the case being cheap. Um, the case itself, because I have other Thule cases that are car top carriers, and I'm not really happy with the plastic. The plastic on this is actually better than what's on the car top carriers. It's, it's, I'm not a chemist or an engineer, but I think it's high, de uh, high density polyethylene, and it's thicker than normal HDPE that I'm used to for this kind of case. So um, actually kudos to that. But there are a lot of reviews, particularly on Amazon, about these clasps, and they are just really cheap plastic class that are almost like the cheapest ones you can get which is really disappointing for the price point but uh, if they click they have a real solid clicking sound if they go click like that they're good to go when I did land I had uh, two flights uh, you know a layover in Boston and then uh, into Long Beach California and when I got here one of these was undone um, I don't know if that's from TSA checking it or if it just came undone in flight but they are kind of cheap that's my only kind of negative so far but more importantly let's see how the bike fared. Yeah, you can see some scraping on that. I don't know if that's going to show up on camera, but it got scraped up. Okay. So there it is. There's the outer foam. And the bike looks like it's more or less intact. Let's kind of take everything out and inspect it here. I went down to uh, Home Depot and I grabbed uh, some of the uh, some just some walk-off mats, some for uh, a little bit of extra padding. Figured also gives me a spot to set everything when I'm assembling and disassembling. Oh, TSA did check it out. Now this is a uh, Santa Cruz Bronson 2014 carbon. And uh, it's a 27.5. I think a 29 would fit in here, but it'd be a real tight fit. I had to run it the long ways across in order to get it to fit. And uh, that's because there was more compression here. Because once the uh, once it was in there, I couldn't get the uh, everything to fit correctly or to close correctly. Okay. Instructions. Insert. Tires still have pressure. So it looks like everything survived. All right, let's put it together and go for a ride. Okay, so I just got done with my ride and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get the bikes disassembled and we'll put it all back in here. Um, this plastic, like I was saying, it's a th it's a thicker plastic. It's definitely thicker than what they use, in my opinion, on the uh, car top carriers. So it's definitely more rugged, but um, this is a Santa Cruz Bronson 2014. If you're interested, you can check the specs out to see what size it is compared to your bike. But, but um, it's definitely a snug fit. So that part goes on. And then you take one of the pieces of foam, lay it over. And then uh, I have been taking, uh, I take a couple pieces of carpet. 
and just have them with me so I have a, a space that's not completely in the dirt to uh, to work with. And uh, typically I've been sticking the tail end towards the uh, bottom. And that's where the roller wheels are. Better view of the roller wheels. And uh, just doing that there and then I, this gets subjective. It depends on what type of bike you have and how it goes in and what size it is. But I always like to put just a little bit of extra padding in. Mostly to keep the handles from rubbing up on the uh, on the uh, on the frame. Of course, the bike gets plenty of abuse by just riding, but every little bit helps, I figure. Okay. Now I have a stealth reverb, which is awesome, but uh, the cable is routed through the tube and comes out, so you cannot take the seat post off. So you have to take the seat off in order to make this particular bike work. Here's the fork. Kind of the same principle. I kind of wrap it up. I've got a foam piece that I got from Home Depot. I stick over the head tube and just kind of get it relatively close to the end. Roll it up and at some point in the roll I'll take the handle and work it in so it's not free to go wherever it wants. Typically try to get it so that we're as short as possible because it's definitely going to be a snug fit as you're about to see. Put the other piece of foam on and over. Make sure that cable's good. Yeah, it's good enough. But it'll tighten up. Oh crap. <laughs> Important step, a little lesson here. Completely forgot about these guys. I usually like uh, eight or nine inches of that. I'll go super crazy on tightening this one down. Just kind of to hold it in place type deal. Again, the plastic on the buckles is really cheap. nice and straight. Loop through. When I say nice and straight, I mean not twisted. Okay, excess there. Okay, now we're going to try it again. Chink. Good 
solid sounds. Now the fun begins. A little bit of tightening. Make sure it's kind of overlapping. cable for here goes all the way around so it goes under and comes back up and there's an alignment issue right there they're not lined up tight put my knees on it to try and Front lined up. Just a little bit of overlappage. There we go. Okay. So we've got really good overlapping going on right here. And in the back over here, it's actually not too bad. It takes a little practice, I'm getting better at this. All right, there, right there, that's one of the issues you wanna try and avoid. So pull that tight, pull these, pull these. Of course the disadvantage here is you know TSA is gonna totally open this thing up and uh, <laughs> hopefully they can figure out how to get it back together. So it tends to bulge. So once I know I've got all the edges overlapped, I kind of tighten it down just a little bit at a time on each side. That uh, basically kind of makes sure that you don't pull so tight that it comes undone on one side. Now with this bike, again, Santa Cruz Bronson Carbon 2014 model. It weighs in the entire case around 68 to 70 pounds, fully loaded here. And I don't really have any bike gear in there aside from the bike itself. And I went down to Home Depot and I bought uh, a couple of carabiners with a handle on them just to give it a little, little bit of extra lock and something else to grab onto. There you have it. Thule round trip sport case. I think it's better than a soft bag. Uh, I think uh, I'd love to try one of their bigger ones that uh, cost the $600 price point. This is the 380 price point, at least when I bought it. And uh, there it is. Enjoy. Remember, these are uh, my thoughts, not yours. So they're worth exactly what you paid for them. All right, so this is the issue I have with the case once you get it off the, uh, or it goes through security. When I put this on earlier in the uh, video, you'll see that it was completely sealed. TSA, when they did their check, it opened up, and now it's been open the whole time. It's been flying around, so that's part of, part of that with this case, and you just need to anticipate that and make sure that everything that you have packed in there is big enough to where it wouldn't slide out of a situation like this.